We're a little short-staffed at the moment. I'll have your luggage sent up in a few minutes, if <sighs> that's all right. No, no problem. No problem at all. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to go in and check out the barroom. With any luck, there'll be a chance to, you know, fix any last-minute snafu. Okay, okay, I'll go up. I'll start getting dressed. Can you give me the key? Yeah, okay. I'll cross your fingers. I get them crossed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, this is your room? Uh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> the desk clerk gave me this key. Uh, this is for room 513. That's us? Well, it was a mistake. We should have taken both keys when we checked in. Oh, accidents happen. I'm sorry. <sighs> so am I. I'll just... Excuse me. It's okay. These things ha happen. Oh, boy. If you, if you want to follow her, you can. Go ahead, really. I don't think that's such a hot idea. Well, she was mortified. No more than you or I. Yeah, but, I mean, if, at least if you went after her, you could explain. <sighs> or explain what? That she... I don't know what. I don't know. Look, Maria. She knew what was going on. You know, I don't have to draw a diagram. I'm sorry that Brooke had to walk in us. See us that way. I mean, if I had my druthers, we would have been doing something a little more innocuous, like... Like, unpacking? Okay, but at least, I mean, this doesn't bother you that she just walked around in and... This is not my key. <clears throat> I walked into what I thought was my room. I walked in on another couple. My name is Martin. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Martin. You're in 518. Well, so then why was I given... <clears throat> The key to room 513. I apologize. I must have looked at the eight and seen a three. You see, I broke my glasses this morning. I, I don't care how it happened. I would like the key to my room now, please. Right away. I'm truly sorry. Please accept my apology. All the while, I, I, I'd just be dying to hold you and kiss you. make love to you. Like I am right now. The flowers should have been on the tables an hour ago. Please take care of it. So, uh, is everything a go? Yeah, everything except the centerpiece is piled to the side of, you know, the dining room. Hey, that's easily fixed. I just want this thing to be over with. Why the hell can't we just show up, sip some wine, and, and go home? <laughs> really, the sooner the better, I think. So how long, how, how much longer? Too long. Thank God I have you. Mm. Forget my camera. I mean, yeah, really. Mom, don't start picking on Dad already. <laughs> Listen, if you're lucky, it'll be a nice shot of me in tomorrow's paper. Oh, I like that. All goes well. Speaking of the press, I think everybody's inside panting. Where's Ted and Dixie? They're coming in right now. <laughs> the easy part, okay? These are all familiar faces. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
sexually abused by your captors. What exactly did they do to you? The rights to Mr. Orsini's childhood, to his private life period, are reserved. You got that? It's none of your damn business. Hey, I'm doing my job. The public has a right to no, know. The public has a right to know if 89 was a good year for Cabernet. So by all means, if you've got a question for Mr. Orsini about wine or his family's vineyard, you go right ahead. Otherwise, you think you're gonna slither in here and rip him up for that compost heap you call a newspaper. You got another thing coming, pal. Ladies and gentlemen, if any of you here to discuss anything other than wine, you can join my muckraking friend here outside in the gutter. Wait. Let him go. It's all right. Just let him go. Why? Because the man asked a question. Now, what was it you wanted to know? Oh, yeah. My kidnapping. I was taken from my family in my home when I was eight years old. And I don't remember much about it. Tell you the truth, I don't remember much about my childhood, either before or after. See, I guess they took that, too. But I'm kind of lucky, because I don't want to remember what they did to me. I don't think anybody should go through life carrying that kind of nightmare around in their head. And no matter how much I hate them for what they stole from me, I can't change it. I can't undo it. It'll always be there for the rest of my life like a scar. But that doesn't mean I have to build the rest of my life around it. I don't want to. This time a year ago, I didn't even know my real name. Ted Orsini sounded kind of funny. Didn't really fit until I realized I shared it with a very funny and wonderful lady, my mother, Nola. Those two things, my name, my mother, were given back to me by some very special people. I want to give back as, as well as I've gotten. I'll work very hard to keep my mother's vineyard alive. To pick up where she left off. And try to fill in the hole that she left when she died. And if I do a good job, that's one for us. But if I screw up, if I don't live up to the name that she left me, then that'll be the same as if those people, the ones who stole my childhood, destroyed my family, to be the same as if they won. Hear this. 
they didn't win. I know who I am. Orsini, Nola's son, and I'm back. Ted Orsini is back. Your story. Print it. Not till it's over. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the uh, formal press conference for this evening. Any other questions you may have about Rossini's vintage year will be uh, entertained over dinner. Dancing to follow. Thank you. You did a great job, Ted. Congratulations. Thank you for taking on that guy for me. Hey, I just held him. You finished him off all by yourself. Thanks anyway. One day, I'm going to tell our grandchildren how you ditched a piece of dirt from the bottomlands of the fourth estate. I don't know about that. Isn't life amazing? Everybody in this room is waiting for Ted to lose his cool. Turns out I'm the one that goes ballistic. You did what everybody else wanted to do and didn't. You came to Ted's defense. I mean, in the movies, that's what the heroes are made of. And it's what makes me proud to be Mrs. Ted Martin right now. <laughs> 